casual one. I thought it was a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy for the night. And it was rather dull. I get what they were up to, but it wasn't my thing. So we need to, first of all, be able to measure our space. So there's a number of ways of measuring our space. Now, I've got these little bounty mats. They weren't very expensive. And they've got the dashes on. So I can kind of use these to measure with. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just measure out my, if you like, my feet using the position of the feet. So we start with our toes apart and this is for the position. This is really important for when we get back to training with one another. This is your position of not ready. Or rather, you are ready, but you're being mindful. You haven't manifested anything. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is how you take your stance in a combat situation, but it's a good way to get the right distance. So the first thing is, from the toes being out, and we've done this in lots of different formats, I bring the heels in line. So this is two fists apart, and you should just have to make two fists in, maximum two and a half. And that is it's hip distance apart. So now I'm going to take the toe down again, and then I bring the feet down again. So this now is shoulder distance apart. This is where when I bend my knees, I'm just doing a little bit of a tweak there. I can kind of touch the back of my knees. And this is a good working position. It's working the knees. And there's lots of things that we can do from here. So this is going to be a very classical five minutes or so of authentic practice. I'm not going to say it's traditional anything, but it's about your mind over discomfort. So I'm going to come from the heart center. I'm going to take my hand out to the sides. And as we push out, just imagine that you're pushing something to the side. I, I imagine that it's uh, the compressor in Star Wars, at the first star was showing the end, so pushing it out. I'm going to set a little bit of tension in the arms, and I'm bending into my stance. I'm widening the little bit because I'm not scrimping on this. This is a really important exercise. Shaolin Temple, they would stand in this position until they were told not to stand in it. You know, I, I believe in stories of the guy who had to meditate outside in his kneeling position for however long it was. Because it is about impermanence. Then we do little circles. Breathing. Because our muscles, the internal fabric of our body, work in different ways and these spirals that run from our body are the key to our power and it's kind of learning how to wind these up and how to allow them to unwind so that we don't explode so that when somebody cooks us up we don't do something irrational change direction with that look breathing and focusing. So, on the black belt, when I did my black belt, I had to do arm rolls for five minutes. And trust me, it was a long five minutes. However, it's not as long as from morning till lunchtime in the Shaolin Temple. Bed into it. Don't lose your posture. And now we're just going to have a nice burst. So, we're going to bring our hands in. Let's close those fists. Bring them into the hips. Ah, settle down. Think about the center line. Think about where your solar plexus are. That elbow comes into your solar plexus. You just do it earlier. Controlling your breathing, and then that punch comes out in the straight line. It corkscrews around, and we breathe out. We're going to do 10 of them. And we want to imagine that we're. I closed my fist a bit too early there, that we're kind of pulling a really powerful elastic band out, and there's a tension in our arms. Oh. 
Backing into it. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one. Ten. Now we're going to release the legs. So we're going to use a kick. We're going to push up onto the left leg. Roll the leg up. Now remember what I said yesterday about bouncing, and I know it's hard. I'm going to push an elephant stance kick out through the heel. Whoa. Take it down. Move through.